Hey everyone, this is Cody with The Connected Camper. Thanks for tuning in. Today we're going to be getting started on a set of videos where we put inverter generators to the test on an extended runtime test in a specific set of conditions. I'll be going over those exact conditions here in just a second, and I'll have some really good data to share with you at the end of each video. So be sure to check back as these videos get published if you see a generator on the list that you are interested in getting data on. Again, thanks for watching and I'll get right to it. So as I just mentioned, we have a very specific set of conditions that we're going to be testing here today. What we're going to do is for each of these generators, we are going to put one half gallon of fuel in the tank and then put them at 50% load just to see how long they will run. Now, this, the test that we're performing today is on the Westinghouse iGen 2200. It has an 80cc engine and its rated output is 1800 watts. 50% of that for today's test is going to be 900 watts continuous. The fuel tank size is 1.14 gallons and that comes into effect down here when we do some algebra to find out how long this would run on a full tank of fuel. And so again, our testing conditions are 50% load, one half gallon of gasoline. To be able to compare differently sized generators, we are going to be measuring that uh, we are going to be measuring the kilowatt hours provided throughout this test. Some larger generators will be able to output more power. However, they may run for a less period of time because they have a larger size engine. Just a theory. Don't know that for a fact. We'll find that out as we get into these. Also detailed here is just the cost of the test. We are using 87 octane fuel, and so... Uh, and that's going to be the same in every test. So the cost of the test is just half of 87 octane, the price of that per gallon. And then we also just have a nice comparison down here of the cost to run this machine per hour when you are using 87 octane. So now I'm going to jump into showing you the tools that we'll use as part of this test today. First item here is just this 20 watt LED work light. Um, this will show us when the power is cut, and it will also come in handy because it's going to get dark during the test today. Next item here is this little kitchen timer next to it. This kitchen timer will reset at 100 minutes. Not going to be the most useful for this test, so you can ignore it. I'll have some other data at the end that we'll cover in Solar Assistant. Next one here is just a temperature gauge. Generators perform differently at different temperatures. A voltage meter, so you can see the voltage output from the generator throughout the test an extension cord and power strip because we don't have enough outlets on the generator. And then one half gallon of gasoline. This is 87 octane and it is going to uh, be put in this gas can. You can barely see the line there. It also has that Lucas uh, fuel conditioner in it. This is the tools that we'll be using today. And now we are off to the races on our duration test with this Westinghouse generator. Bottom left, you can see that kitchen timer. Um, that thing is going to be a little bit confusing to read here as we proceed along. Um, it does increment up to 100 minutes and then starts over. So we still will have a good reading on there. However, I'm going to show you solar assistant towards the end of this, just so that you can see a little bit more clearly when it started and when it, when it ended. Um, now, I'm just going to give you a little bit of thoughts on this generator as we're um, running here. This Westinghouse generator is about 50 pounds with oil and gasoline in it. It is a good little generator. I think it's going to perform up there slightly higher than some of the larger generators in its class. 
Um, I don't really have any reasons why. It's mainly just a hunch. Um, this generator works really well for running my mini split, uh, charging my batteries. The only problem is, and, and this is common in the generators in this size range, is that it doesn't have remote start. I do have to go outside of the rig, um, get it started up, and then go back inside. Um, another downside of this is that this generator actually has its air intake underneath um, without any grates, without anything catching it other than the air filter eventually. Now other generators like Pulsar and Generac that operate on the same platform, largely they look the exact same just with different color plastic, um, those also have similar issues with that air intake being on the bottom. And luckily I noticed this while we were out in Colorado. Um, this platform should be run on a piece of plywood or something that otherwise protects it from the sand, dirt, or gravel that is underneath it. Otherwise, with that air intake down there, it is going to suck up the air up into the intake and eventually make its way into the engine. Now, you'll notice there are other YouTube videos out there where people have 50, 60 hours on these things and they take them in because they aren't running right and they end up having low compression because they ran them on gravel or sand or something else. Um, and so these things, I would say, if you have one of these, make sure that you're running it on plywood or um, on two by fours or something like that, getting it up off of the dirt a little bit. Now, talking about the test here, you notice that the temperature does drop a few degrees. I don't think that will affect affect the test here. You can also see little bits of water hitting the uh, what, hitting the GoPro here. Um, it did start drizzling throughout. It did not actually rain. If you look at the humidity there, it's 85% humidity. It was a damp, rainy, and chilly night. Um, and uh, we're actually getting up there towards the end of the runtime test here. And so you'll see it is going to go dark here um, in just a few moments. And, uh, and I did give it a couple tries getting it started again, but I did just want to also make sure that the carburetor was completely empty. Now, if you take a look at the screen, you'll see the solar assistant data here. Um, we have the start time and then the end time. The start time was at uh, 18.59 or 6.59 p.m. Um, and then the end time was, um, let me get over here. The end time was at 21.25, so about two hours and 25 minutes later. So now we're back in our Excel sheet here, and we can see that the Westinghouse iGen 2200 provided 2.2 kilowatt hours at 50% load and one half gallon of gasoline in the tank. Now, if we come up here, we can see some additional data that we have collected. So the uh, two hours and 25 minutes was 2.42 hours of runtime at 50% load and a half a gallon there. The uh, estimated runtime is five hours and 52, five hours, 5.52 hours rather, um, extrapolating based on the gasoline tank size as well. And so also down here is the kilowatt hours and then the cost per kilowatt hour. Now, since this is the first generator in our series that we're testing, we don't have any data to compare this against. So going forward, we are going to use this as our comparison when we get into the win, the Kipper, the Gen Maxes. Um, and so this data will be very useful going forward. However, right now it doesn't mean a lot since we don't have a lot of other items to baseline it against. So that will do it for today. This was the extended runtime test of the Westinghouse iGen 2200 inverter generator. If you like this video and want to see more videos like this, feel free to like and subscribe below. There will be other generators in this series coming up in the coming weeks where I run them through the exact same testing conditions. Again, thanks for watching. This is Cody with The Connected Camper.